So in this video on heart failure, we're thinking about the causes of heart failure, the etiology. And in the States, you don't have the A. So what causes heart failure? And we're going to start off by thinking about what causes left-sided heart failure. So just to remind ourselves, we have the diagram that you'll be familiar with from the last video, hopefully. This is the left side of the heart here. This is the left side. That's the left. And that's the right side here. I've got space. So what we have is, this is the left heart. This is the right heart. And of course it's the left heart that's pumping blood to the body. So what we have here is we have the left ventricle, the aorta, taking blood to the body, the blood draining back in the systemic veins via the inferior and superior vena cava. Here we have the pulmonary arteries taking blood from the right ventricle to the lungs, draining back via the pulmonary veins to the left atrium. So let's think about the causes of a left ventricular failure first of all. So we've already learned that heart failure is an inability of the heart to generate sufficient cardiac output to meet the metabolic demands of the tissues. So first of all we want to think about left heart failure. So that's that side of the heart, the left side of the heart thinking particularly about left ventricular failure. So what are the causes here? Well, the first ones we have to look at are caused by ischemic heart disease. So these are all really caused by ischemic heart disease or IHD, ischemic. heart disease and this is related to diseases of the coronary arteries now you probably remember that the coronary arteries are the arteries that supply the myocardium itself with blood so the myocardium itself has a high metabolic demand so the first two arteries that leave the aorta are the right and the left coronary arteries to take blood to the heart muscle itself, to the myocardium. And the problem is that if we think about a cross section of the arterial wall, so this is the lumen in the middle and then we've got the layers of the artery around about. The blood should go through the middle here, up and down through there, through this nice open lumen. But what happens is we get the deposition of uh, atheroma, atheromatous material, the, pro the disease process of atherosclerosis. So this uh, atheroma will accumulate. And it tends to develop over the time, over time, bad diet, obesity, diabetes, smoking. Then what can happen is we can get a blood clot forming on it that blocks off the artery altogether sometimes, or an area of the artery. And that will occlude the blood supply to a particular area of the myocardium. So we're talking about ischemic heart disease. Ischemia is reduced blood supply. And this is caused by coronary arterial atherosclerosis, causes ischemic heart disease. Now, if an area of the heart muscle loses its blood supply altogether, for example, like this, if there's a complete clot that blocks off the whole thing, that will cause a myocardial infarction and there'll be death of part of the heart muscle. So what that means is that a particular part of the heart muscle will no longer be working properly. So there might be an area here. Then instead of contracting nicely, that area 
dies and doesn't contract. That means there's less contractile muscle. And that can cause what we call an, an akinetic, an akinetic segment. A means without, kinetic is a movement. So that area just won't move or it can be dyskinetic, it won't move properly. And that will reduce the pumping efficiency of the left side of the heart. Another possibility is heart block because of course the heart muscle depends on the coordination of the atrioventricular node, sorry the sinoatrial node up here. Uh, the impulse is picked up by the uh, atrioventricular node and goes down the conducting pathways. And if there's um, an infarction that involves the conducting pathways, then if an area of the conducting pathway dies, then the impulse isn't going to get through properly and that can cause a condition called heart block. So those first group of causes are complications of ischemic heart disease. Now another common cause of left ventricular failure is high blood pressure, systemic hypertension. So for one reason or another there's too much constriction in the in the arterial system, usually at the level of the arterioles, in the systemic uh, arterial system. And if the pressure in the systemic arteries is high, that means the left ventricle has to work harder to get the blood and the oxygen to the body. What we say is that hypertension causes an obligatory uh, an obligatory high output. It has to work harder to get the blood through the relatively constricted arterial system where the pressure is higher. It makes sense if the pressure here in the arteries are, in the in the arteries are fairly low, then the workload of the left ventricle is also fairly low. But if it's pumping against a much higher what we call afterload, a much higher pressure in the arterial system, it's got to work that much harder to get the blood out. And over time, that will cause an enlargement of the heart muscle, that will cause a, what we call a, a hypertrophy. So, so the hypertension will lead to a, a hypertrophy. The heart will enlarge, and this is what causes the cardiomegaly, the enlarged heart. cardiomegaly and this will compensate for a period of time but eventually this will result in failure so the heart can compensate for a period of time but then as it carries on enlarging it, it can no longer compensate and we get decompensation and also the very high workload damages the myocardium and we get fibrosis in it so the, the hypertension will eventually lead to uh, left ventricular failure. First there'll be hypertrophy with the cardiomegaly, but then there'll be failure because of the obligatory high output and the obligatory high workload of the left ventricle. Um, myocarditis is, is, another, is another cause. Myocard, myocardium, itis, inflammation of um, this, this can be caused by uh, a viral infection uh, that, that can damage the heart muscle. That's one reason why when you've got a viral infection you shouldn't uh, exercise, you should rest. And cardiomyopathy is basically any disease of the heart muscle. Cardio, um, heart, myo, muscle, pathy, disease of. So. This tends to be a global condition affecting the whole heart muscle and this could be caused by uh, alcohol for example or vitamin B deficiency um, as a cardiomyopathy. Now another group of causes are the um, valvular diseases. Now this is the mitral valve here and this is the aortic valve here. So disease of the mitral valve or the aortic valve means that the flow of blood through the heart will not be efficient. 
So for example, if there's mitral regurgitation, the blood's going to go from the left atrium through to the left ventricle. But then when the left ventricle contracts, that valve should shut. That should absolutely shut like that. So the blood can only get out through the aorta. But if that valve is becoming, um, becoming a bit floppy, so the ventricle will, uh, the, the atrium will contract, the blood will go through, that valve should shut during ventricular systole. But if that's floppy and leaking, then we're going to get regurgitation of blood so that when the left ventricle contracts, instead of all the blood going into the aorta, some's going to go back. And obviously that's going to be an inefficient situation. Or if there's disorder of the aortic valve, again, after contraction, this valve should shut so that the blood can't get back. But if the valve isn't working, the blood can get back. And again, it's inefficient because valves are systems which should ensure one-way flow of blood. So disease of the heart valves, for example, caused by rheumatic heart disease um, or other possible infections um, can cause it, um, w will mean that the heart is not working efficiently and will be unable to maintain an adequate output to maintain the metabolic demand of the body. Another cause are, 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 are abnormal heart rhythms. Um, probably the most, yeah, I'd say the most common we see is atrial fibrillation. So in, in atrial fibrillation, instead of having a nice ordered atrial contraction, the atria are just fibrillating and we, use the, we lose the atrial kick and uh, cardiac output is, is not as efficient. Um, tachycardias, uh, tachydysrhythmias are another cause. The big problem with tachydysrhythmias is um, they don't really allow time for the heart to, uh, to fill during diastole, so it contracts and then it's contracting again quickly before there's been time for adequate ventricular filling. Um, bra bra brady dysrhythmias as well, slow, slow heart rhythms can also obviously reduce cardiac output as cardiac output is heart rate multiplied by stroke volume. Another cause of left heart failure is, is anemia. Now anemia is a, a reduced oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. So even if the heart's pumping out normal amounts of blood, the normal volumes of blood, remember it needs the oxygen, doesn't it? So if there's not enough oxygen going to the, um, to the uh, body, that will be detected in the uh, chemoreceptors and that will increase heart rate. So people that are anemic uh, have a, tend to have a faster heart rate and the heart's working harder to circulate more blood through to try and maintain the oxygen flux. It needs to pump a greater volume of blood to get the same amount of oxygen through. And, and again, that causes an obligatory high output. It's a bit like the hypertensive situation. So anemia, there's an obligatory high output. And again, that can lead to uh, enlargement of the heart, myocardial hypertrophy, cardiomegaly, and, and eventually a left ventricular failure. And just a few other things to bear in mind. If someone's fluid overloaded, we have to be very careful with people with heart disease in hospitals because if we give them too much fluid, that will send them into acute pulmonary edema. There's a few other causes. Constrictive pericarditis is a possibility. And uh, the, 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 the pericardium, of course, is the layer around the heart. Or, or, or congenital defects, uh, ventral septal defect or uh, another one called patent ductus arteriosus, th th things that people are born with because there hasn't been the appropriate changes at birth. So they're all causes of um, left ventricular failure. And we can actually see left ventricular failure. They tend to be chronic causes, but we can see it as an acute condition as well. So we can get an acute left ventricular failure. So after a myocardial infarction with large muscle loss, um, seen this a few times unfortunately, if a lot of the left ventricle is lost then what happens is the patient goes into acute pulmonary edema because of the backlog of blood through the pulmonary uh, veins as we saw on the last video causing venous uh, congestion, blood congestion in the lungs. Some of the red cells actually get into the, alve into the alveoli and uh, some of the red cells, because the, the, the blood is uh, 
is congesting the lungs in acute pulmonary edema. And some of the red cells get in here and uh, we see pink frothy sputum. Um, pink frothy sputum in the in patients that are extremely distressed and extremely short of breath. Another acute cause is uh, acute valve failure. I mean, if there's a complete valve failure, then that's a cause of uh, st sudden death syndrome. The patient will all die from that. Uh, another one is rupture of the uh, intraventricular septum. So there can be, normally after a myocardial infarction, if part of the septum dies, there can be a communication between the two sides of the heart uh, with a very poor prognosis. Um, there can be obstruction caused by pulmonary embolism. So in a pulmonary embolism, there'll be obstruction because, um, I'll just draw that diagrammatically, there'll be obstruction because a pulmonary arterial branch or a large part of the pulmonary artery is blocked. And if it's very severe, it can block it off altogether or block off one of the main pulmonary branches going to the right or to the left lung. And uh, tamponade is where there is pressure uh, around about the heart. Um, pressure around about the heart, because that's the pericardium around about there. And you, normally blood, but potentially fluid gets into the pericardium. That's going to constrict the heart. So there are those acute causes of left ventricular failure as well. And as we've said, left ventricular failure will lead to right ventricular failure. So if there's failure of the left ventricle, as we noticed in the last video, if there's failure in the left ventricle, blood's going to be retained in there. That means the blood can't get from the left atrium through to the left ventricle easily and the blood dams back. That dams the blood back into the pulmonary veins, dams the blood back into the lungs. That's going to make it harder for the blood to get from the pulmonary artery into the lungs because the lungs are already full of blood and congested. That's going to make it harder for the blood to get from the right ventricle through into the pulmonary artery. That's going to increase the workload of the right ventricle. And the same thing happens. Initially it compensates. You get a right ventricular hypertrophy and compensation. But then as the hypertrophy continues, the heart enlarges, we get this cardiomegaly situation. Then eventually there's going to be a right ventricular failure. So what we see is left ventricular failure will lead to right ventricular failure over time. And in the next video, we'll look specifically at the causes where the failure begins in the right ventricle. But that was the heart failure etiology in um, starting off with left ventricular failure.